So we've been working on this demo around uh, these attending physician documents. Uh, these are just patient records, something that you would get from a doctor that you had to process, and we'd be processing this for an insurance claim of some sort, either underwriting or claims, uh, typically something like life insurance or maybe uh, medical insurance coverage, things like that. And what do we do when we just get a stack of documents and how do we break those up and how do we get information that's actionable off of them? So this one uh, is interesting and in it's 16 pages long. I've got the adult summary form. Maybe someone filled something out. What I'm going to get off of these is I'm mostly just going to get off the name, date of birth, and the medical record. Um, and then from there, once we've got all that, you can pretty much dial it in for each of these documents and get uh, more data off. This uh, summary document is four pages, or sorry, three pages, and then there's a blank page. What do we do about blank pages? We'll be ignoring that. Then there's an extended history form. Maybe someone filled out. And then we get into these consultations about uh, going to see a, another doctor, so a second opinion, and some unstructured text here, which we're going to feed to Watson to do the natural language processing on this and get some um, actionable information out of that as well. Uh, there's an x-ray here. Uh, then we move into about five or six different lab reports. These are things, uh, you know, blood tests and things like that. So a bunch of lab reports. And then down at the bottom here, we've got some different layouts of lab reports. So you can do these different layout things. They just require a different fingerprint. That's a two-pager. A, a, very different kind of lab report. Now, um, people always ask, can we get this data off here, the blood levels and things like that? And absolutely. Right now, we're still just, like I said, focused on the the date, the date of birth, the patient number, things like that. And this one is just a list of prescriptions that the person has been taking and filling on a regular basis. And then we get one that's a HIPAA form, not necessarily part of the case or something you need to diagnose someone, but something you might need. But more interesting than this, and this one is handprint. So we've done some work around the handprint and getting that off using um, using the ICR, maybe, uh, actually probably the Periscript engine in this demo. So that's the form. Uh, let me move into actually reading that in. I have a folder here that I simply have to go and grab um, that document. I copy it here and I place it in this folder and my background thread will come along and pick it up. And there it is, it's been picked up. Now it'll run through page identification, it'll break up those pages into the constituent parts, and then it'll run through Profiler, which will actually get the relevant data off each of those pages. And we'll wait for that to finish, and I'll bring up DataCap Studio, sorry, I'll bring up DataCap Desktop, and watch it uh, wait for it to process. So I'll pick this one here as the documents is processed and you can see on the right hand side here I've got all my pages here broken up into their different parts the documents have been broken up so I've got a three pager the patient info I've got my patient history my consultation my lab services documents my drug history my HIPAA access if this is all green typically this document would go straight through so the user wouldn't have to do any changes they wouldn't actually see it we would just pass it straight through in this case I've forced every document to be reviewed, set it to a status that it requires review. So what's nice about this is I can see a nice big snippet of the actual value. If it's the wrong value, I don't have to do much of anything. I can simply click somewhere and it'll fill in the data, or if it's multiple words, um, I simply rubber band to get that. So that's one of the nice features about this. Um, when I want to fill the data, I don't have to type it all in. I can simply click somewhere to get that. And if it's not right, like it's scrawl handprint, I can see it in this nice big snippet here and just type in the value. So even if I have to do manual processing, I'm, I'm actually going to improve my performance um, when I'm working on these documents. So that one's done. I'm going to submit it, move on to the next one. Again, this is the extended history form. I've got Jane Doe, I've got the date of birth, I've got the patient data, and I've got this med rec number off of that. Again, all yellow check marks. This one wouldn't have been, wouldn't have had to have been reviewed. The next one has what's called a confidence error. So the OCR engine gives a confidence on each and every character. In this case, the 00, zero it's not completely sure about. I don't know why, but it should be. It looks nice. Maybe they're too close together, but it's not sure about it. So it just wants you to review it. You can set those levels higher or lower. Typically, if you have a field that has a lot of issues and it's something like a patient number, 
I would do something like do a lookup on a database or look up on a format of it or something like that and say if it ha if it is in this database or if it has this format, then it's okay. Then we're just going to ignore the confidence issues and just send it straight through. This one is also more interesting. This one has this unstructured text here at the bottom that we've actually taken off and fed into, in this case, Alchemy, which is being renamed to Watson Natural Language Understanding. And I fed that over and I've got a lot of information off of it. And one of the things that I said, are there any conditions on this? So if you look at this condition, pulmonary fibrosis, it's in the middle of a sentence here. So how did I get that? Well, this Watson project understands things about different kinds of medical conditions. It came back with a huge list of different pieces of data that are available on this document. But in this case, I just said to fill this with a condition. If there are multiple conditions, I can make this a list of conditions and pass that to my backend system when we're all done. But I just want you to know that this is not done in a traditional manner. This is done with Watson. Cough congestion is the, is the description, and the rest of the data is there, and I will submit that. Again, here's the lab report. All the data came off. Automatically, I'm not going to have to review that. The next lab report's there. The next lab report. Uh, this lab report has some confidence issues on the actual patient ID, so this would be something that I would have to review. So this would be the second piece of information on this entire list of pages in this patient record, this attending physician summary that I would actually have to review. I'll submit that. Looks okay. Now this one has some issues around the slashes, and it's also picked up an early underscore part of this piece of text that's just below it. So we might be able to do something later about having image cleanup remove that uh, dots and things like that. We could do some things like that if that came up a lot. And it has an extra comma on the end. I could write a rule to remove commas. I should probably put a rule in here to only allow numbers, slashes, and maybe hyphens. So um, then it would leave out the comma. But that's one field that I had to make some changes on. Not uncommon. Now, this is another one where we've got the lab report, patient name, the date. There is no date of birth on this one. If I wanted to fill it in, I could. I could actually do a lookup on Jane Doe and fill it in as well, but that one just doesn't exist on this document. This one is the list of prescriptions. We could do some line item stuff. I know we've got some videos out there for doing line item stuff as well. We could extract all those line items as well and make those part of the data set. This one does not have a patient ID, so what's nice about this is since it didn't, and that's going to be our main lookup capability, is I'm associating with it on a previous lab service. The previous lab services document, I just went backward in the documents until I came up with a patient ID, and then I'm going to associate it with one of those since it's typically in with one of the patients that's coming through, so we're just going to associate it with the patient that it came through with. I'm going to submit that. And the last one is this HIPAA form, and it's all handprint, okay? So things like Jane Doe, I was able to actually recognize that. And my image enhancement is overzealous. It's removed a lot of the J in here. And I think we'd have to dial that down. I haven't done a lot of work on the image processing on this one. So just this is pretty raw, not a lot of work going on around it. And the date is missing some slashes, but it was able to fill that in. So that one's still correct. The patient number, patient ID also came from a previous document. So it's not on here, just like the drug history documents. And then the access theme, uh, John Doe, that's the person that has access to it. And this one got it wrong. It should be spouse, and it got grandmother. So just a mistake, something you have to correct. And that's the last. So I've gone through all nine pages of that. I'm now ready to export this. I take this document, and it would go out to a back-end site, like a FileNet P8 or something like that, where it would be stored. And users could create actionable workflows around managing that patient uh, record, this, this attending physician report. I want to show two more document types going through this, and these are a consultation, a medical transcription document, all unstructured data right here, and another one is a operative report, another medical transcription of a operation that occurred. Uh, these are just sample documents taken off the internet. They're not real information. And I'm going to feed those two through this system drop them in that same folder, and the system will pick them up and process them as well. So there they go, and they'll process through the system. OK, the document is processed here. You can see it's four pages. I'm going to open it and begin to review it. You can see that it's uh, each one is, this one's three pages, this one's one page 
the consultation and the operative report. I've extracted all this data and I've done this through natural language processing through Watson and Alchemy API and what's going to become Watson natural language. So what have I done to do that? Well, I've gotten the patient name, the date, and this is the same kind of document that we saw in the previous set of documents that's a consultation. It just happens to be one that's separated by itself and has a whole completely different format. As well as you can see, we've gotten off the patient numbers and things like that. I've gotten the patient status and this time neck pain. So buried deep into this is this neck pain. And we can review also the operative report. And in this case, the um, operation is a cervical epidural steroid injection, C7 to T1. So we've gotten all that data off of these documents and demonstrated that we can do this through natural language processing, even in unstructured documents. Let's go take a quick look at what that data looks like behind the scenes. So if I open up this layout file, the layout file is what we get back from what we would call data cap insight edition and I start drilling down we've done the layout where we've broken it up in the various blocks of text and where they are and then we get into what is returned from alchemy and it's just tons and tons of data and so what we've got is a person Lance Enterprise it's broken up in his first name last name we've got a date and time there's an organization here called St. Thomas Medical or St. Thomas Memorial Hospital things like that the sentiment is negative, but there's not really a sentiment on this. It's not a letter, but it still gives it a sentiment. And different kinds of entities. I've got a health, health condition for neck pain, another mention of neck pain. So a lot of mentions of neck pain in this document, as well as when I scroll down farther, I've got a another health condition called cervicalgia. Sorry, I've pronounced it bad. Uh, a rescue squad. So you've got something here, an organization rescue. So this must be some sort of accident or something. We can start digging into what is really going on. Lower patient, lower back pain, lower back pain. Uh, there's a pain history here. There's a vehicular trauma. So this must have been caused by an automobile accident. So really, by passing this unstructured data over to one of these natural language processors, we've gotten a lot more capability out of it. We can see this person has seen a ch chiropractor. They've, um, there's an estimated impact speed, uh, there's a motor vehicle accident, again, St. Thomas Memorial, lots of things that we can get off this document that if we use traditional capture and we got off our five fields, we're not going to really see all that detail behind the scenes on what's going on with this patient or with this actual case or claim or whatever it is we're looking at this document for. So that's the demo of the two kind of two kind of documents, the attending physician report as well as this consultation and an operative and an operative report. So that's the end of the demo and thank you for watching.